more demand.
Hello, everybody. It is that time of the week, Friday, almost half past 12, and we are together yet one more time to lunch and learn. Today, we have a really special guest. She is one of our team members. She is one of the initiator of the Versus Virus Incubator, and her name is Nikki. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Hi there, I'm great, and you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you so much. We have been having this request from our participants. They thought they need to learn how to prioritize. So as you have been so efficient and you have been managing so many hats, I thought you'll be the best speaker to, show some, to share some wisdom. Would you like to do that? Sure, sure, I'm ready. Beautiful, so please do so. Great, so I will share my presentation. I hope you're able to see it now. Um, first of all, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the ones, a uh, few here live and the rest maybe online. Um, it's great to be on the front line for once at the Lunch and Learn and not as usually in, in the background. Um, as Viviana mentioned, I had to ask myself as well, why me? Um, in the beginning, I thought it's, it's rather ridiculous because I'm obviously not good at prioritizing. I have always a lot of projects going on. Um, maybe I should rather focus on one or two of them. But at the same time, it needs a lot of prioritization in order to be able to handle so many projects without going insane. So um, that's what I will try to talk about. Um, it was the first time that I reflected upon how I do this, um, because usually I just do whatever I do. Um, and it, it was actually a pleasure to look at myself from the outside and think, well, what are my guidelines? Um, how, how do I try to manage this? Um, maybe we can have some kind of um, conversation around these topics as well. I would love to hear what, what you think about this, how you handle these, these aspects. Um, but let's see how it goes. So these are the five key guidelines that I thought of that um, I try to obey on an everyday basis and that helped me a lot um, to stay productive, focused and, and happy as well. Um, clarify your goals, always the biggest and most difficult tasks. Do as little as you can, something Viviana yesterday mentioned in a, in a post. I, I really believe in that. Um, stay mentally healthy in order to be able to think clear and act clear. Plan on points. I'm a huge fan of, of project planning, otherwise I would probably go insane with all my projects and manage yourself. Even if you have all these guidelines, it's not that easy to actually implement them. So there are a few apps and tools that help me with that. Let's go with the first point. What do you want? That's always the first question I, I ask myself and I ask my team members when it comes to a singular task as well as a big project. Um, is it, oh, I can't continue, so. Is it about money? Is it about impact? Is it about success? Is it about your CV? Um, it's, it's very hard to decide upon this. It, you need to be very, um, very clear and honest with yourself. But even if you know what you want, it's still very difficult to measure how, how can you be successful in that goal? Um, how much money is enough money? Um, how much impact do you have? How do you measure your impact, etc.? So one is defining what's the goal, but the other thing is um, how do I measure it and, and, and what, what exactly do I want to reach within that goal? Um, so only if you know what you really want to achieve, you can prioritize. I have this with all the decisions I take. If I don't have a framework, like guiding principles, how I take a decision. I, it's, it's very difficult for me to take decisions, but when you know this is my first priority, it becomes so much more easy to decide what to focus your time on and whatnot. Um, a 
And as mentioned before, it's, it's very difficult to be honest with yourself, but also with your team members. So I think the, the exchange around this, what do we want to achieve as a team is just as important as the individual reflection and also being aware what do others want to achieve when they are very honest to themselves. Now, I would love to hear, um, not sure if you're up for it, um, what, what you think you want to achieve and if there's something that you discussed with your team. Um, maybe I can, I can get started right away with versus virus. We've done this, I would say, four or five times maybe, um, sometimes more prolonged and sometimes shorter, where we discuss like, over and over again what does each of us really want to achieve with versus virus? Why are we doing it? What, what is this really about? Um, and, and find the common ground. What, what do we agree on? And based on the common ground, we try to take our decisions and direct our little capacity and, and time that we have. Anyone else? wants to share um, how you treat this in, in your team or what you think, why are you doing what you are doing? What is your actual real end goal? It's a difficult question, so I'm not sure if anyone is comfortable talking about it. I can start if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. And I can talk about the lunch and learn. Uh, so when uh, we discussed having lunch and learn, I was thinking how cool would it be if we can know exactly what people need to know and help them do it. So what I really want is I really want to be to focus on the people who are learning on our projects and I really want to enable them to do the things. Uh, and put them in practice. So, uh, and of course this meant I had to be very agile and uh, not plan too much in advance, but listen much more than plan. Uh, so yeah, that was my, my biggest want and my biggest, uh, the, the result I wanted to achieve. And I also, there, but there was also this tension inside my head saying, hey, Bignana, you can't do it without really planning. And then there was this other voice saying, yeah, yeah, you can, you can just listen carefully. So my biggest want again was like, stay real, stay relevant, help them. Don't be superficial. It's, it's a beautiful example. I, I just experienced that as well of the prototype fund, where I realized the more agile and user-centered you're of course the more chaotic it seems to be because you're always like last minute adapting to the wishes um, of these users or your target group so yeah there are always when you take priorities there are always some things that don't go perfectly um, that you just have to accept and, and you start feeling comfortable with it because you know why you're doing it so I, I can I imagine you have a very similar experience with that um, always adapting to the new surveys. <laughs> Anyone else who wants to share a story? Yeah, I, I can. And it's a really, really good question here. I think our team was quite good at the beginning. Also, the, the start of this incubator, help, uh, incubator program helped us a lot to, to really uh, define our objectives and to, to bring it down to a sentence. But to be honest, we didn't talk about it in the last three months. So it's just still the same. It's um, it's not clear who wants uh, which project objectives, who uh, cares about them. The time is already over. So and but but we didn't discuss this. We didn't care. Yeah. So we and we really have to talk about it again and and become agile as you, as you said because it's just. It just stuck there three months, and that doesn't work either for the group, neither for me, neither for myself. Yeah, if if I were in your position, I would definitely prioritize that because, <laughs> um, yeah, when you when you continue now working, you might go even in the wrong direction because mm. somehow these goals can really change within one or two months. Um, so I yeah. think it's a, a, this on a regular basis. 
And it needs time, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Any other stories? Yes, Adela. Um, yes, in my case, uh, it's the fact that uh, I just uh, wanted to bring something from my uh, prior expertise uh, in the corporate world uh, to a greater cause, something bigger than, uh, than us. Uh, COVID has affected everybody. So it started with your call for hackathon. I thought that was really amazing. And I had the chance to participate in a team, being the marketing of that team. We won. And then I found out about the incubator and I knew that one of my uh, bosses was working on a project. So then I said, so I would like to volunteer on your project. If you subscribe it to uh, the incubator, I have a really good feeling about it and I want to, to work as a volunteer on this. So um, it's, it's about uh, this bigger, uh, bigger cause, you know, something bigger than life, so to say. This is what uh, brings me here. And uh, then setting priorities, even when you volunteer, of course you have to set priorities and uh, a little bit of a structure. Although as you mentioned, Nikki, things can change so fast, especially in a very early stage. But as uh, in this team, uh, I am with people that uh, I know very well, you know, from prior experience, we have a level of confidence in which we can work on both like formal and uh, informal level. So, so far so good, but it's not an easy project. <laughs> Um, happy, happy to hear this, and it definitely helps to have a, a foundation of trust within the team, also to talk openly about these points. Um, Absolutely. Especially when things change um, unexpectedly, etc. And especially when you have um, people that what they do is they they bring their extra time, right? Because the, uh, each of us is like doing that in the free time, so to say. But each of that uh, of us has uh, a certain high level of motivation and of passion. So it's like how you juggle with uh, those things. But as you mentioned, having this fundamental trust is so important. Cool. So let's get on um, to the next point um, that is very important to me. How little can you do? Um, we all feel like this from time to time. I hope the cat is working. Um, I have said as well, when you feel like, okay, there are just so many things I could do right now for this project and this goal. Um, what I love to tell myself is being proud of doing little. There are so many things that you can do, but there are also so many things you can actually leave away and it still works out. So. Um, one example for me is a project, um, the Digital Learning Lab, it's a collaborative innovation program for schools. We are doing, we have done it at one school and currently doing it at two other schools. And we actually don't have a website or a logo, which is something I'm a bit embarrassed about, but also somehow proud that all of this is working without websites or logo or corporate identity or, or any of this. And, Somehow we, we never prioritized this because it was never really important and we really want to focus on the optimization of, of this program, how can it be better, more impactful, etc. And, and this is at the heart of the whole thing and until we are not happy with this, we, we won't actually do anything else. <laughs> um, so I think that's something we all also need to practice, being proud of things that we haven't done and it's still working out. Um, so a few questions that I always try to ask myself before I do a task, which also um, a funny part of this is um, it helps to be lazy because when you're lazy, you always try to find an excuse to do some, to not do something. And, and I think that helps a lot with prioritization. Um, the lazier you let yourself be and the more you focus on the really important task. I know that some people are a bit too lazy and then they don't do enough. Um, I'm rather on the opposite side of after round, so I, I rather tell myself be a bit more lazy. Um, so is this feature block entry, whatever you need, what you are doing right now, is this really needed? Does my target group actually want this? I mean, classical mistake, you do something and, and actually nobody wants it. And the more time you invest, the more time is, is lost. Um, is this the most important thing to do right now? 
Um, and is this really relevant for my long-term goal that we talked about before? And something that um, I, I, serve, I see a lot with myself, but also others as well, is this thing, procrastination, where you do a lot of things that are not that relevant just because they are easy, like answering emails. They, it's not fun answering emails, but of course it gives you some kind of pleasure having all your emails done and taken care of or taking care of design. Some people love doing that. So first of all, they, they work a lot, a lot of time on, on their corporate identity. Um, so this thing called procrastination, um, this compulsion to do things right away in, um, without thinking about alternatives um, and trade-offs, um, something that, that um, I'd always try to, to pay attention to, um, especially when you're super motivated and eager and, and this is your passion. I think the danger is even bigger. And then last but not least, if you say, no, this is actually really relevant. I have to do this. It's important. I'm not procrastinating. The other thing that I like to take care of um, and, and reflect upon is what's the quickest way to do this? Um, sometimes it needs time to think about this, but it can save so much time. For example, asking a few friends if they have a template for something you want to do, um, asking a few friends if they have a contact that can help you, um, doing a little research on if this already exists. Um, Doing these kind of things saves me hours every week, it feels like, because I'm just being lazy, reaching out to other people instead of taking care of it myself, <laughs> thereby saving a lot, a lot of time. Um, and last but not least, in, in the realm of staying, um, doing little, um, something that feels like it's very difficult nowadays is to stay proactive. So do what you want or what you think matters and don't get drowned in, in reactive tasks. Um, biggest example, emails. Um, there are so many things that come towards us that it's hard to like um, look away from them and focus on the things that we said, no, I want to take care of this and that's today. And before I haven't done this, I'm not gonna do anything else. Um, so I personally am trying to have my, my email slots so only for an hour a day, I look at my emails and the rest of the time, I don't even look at them. It's not yet working out perfectly, but I, I, really, I still feel like there's a potential for improvement when it comes to emails because they, they take so much of my time and energy and especially in the productive hours, that's, that's really not worth it, it feels like. Um, so here again, um, what, what are your perceptions? Do you have maybe have examples of things you've done that were totally unnecessary <laughs> after, after, um, after being done with it or looking back? Um, do, you, do you have tricks on how to focus on what, what really matters at the moment? Maybe tricks on handling emails, something I'm struggling with. What I personally find is that when I'm really into something that I'm doing, I just forget about the emails. But if I have not discovered what is it that I really want to do now and dedicate my time to it, then I go into this fake feeling of, oh, let me get some emails done to have the feeling I've done something today. So uh, it comes back to yeah, what matters? What matters for me here and now so that I can have maximum impact in the context of what I want to have impact in the future? Mm -hmm. I, I come to a similar point at the end with the tools that I have every day. I have my daily tasks I want to take care of. And every day in the morning, I first prioritize them because I know probably I won't make all of them. So I mark a few reds and that's always what I tell myself, you need to do this first and then you can start wasting your time with other things. Um, but here again, it feels like it takes a lot of time to, to do all of this reflection, but it's really worth it because in the end you, you save so much more time than, than you lose. Yes, Adela. So the question uh, of how not to get distracted by uh, the emails, what I find that works for me, so again, it depends 
what works for whom. For me, what works is to turn off notifications uh, and uh, to reserve a slot for the emails. And of course, knowing that uh, if I have something urgent, then I will have to leave the notifications on. But uh, most of the time, uh, things are urgent. But if I look at them uh, in two hours and not right now, uh, I can still solve them and maybe even uh, in a better way, uh, unless, uh, I mean, uh, instead of getting distracted, you know, because sometimes the definition of uh, urgency is also quite relative. Uh, we might be informed about something super urgent right now, but anyway, we are uh, trapped into something else that we cannot put aside. So anyway, we will be free only in two hours. So then why not really reserving that slot for the urgent emails <laughs> uh, and being sure that we do not get distracted for uh, the project or for the tasks that require a little bit more of uh, thinking and of time. I absolutely agree with that in theory as well. I have a, a tool at the end. I, I work a lot with my screen time app. So like more than half of my apps are closed most of the time. I mean, by now I could also maybe delete them, but sometimes they're still useful having them on the phone, but um, it's, it's really um, liberating to have them just in gray and know that they won't bother you until you want them to, to bother you. I have another small trick, which I just remembered. I, uh, you know, I love doing urgent stuff. Uh, but then when I look back, I can't even remember what it was. So instead of asking myself, is this urgent? Now I ask myself, Bilian, are you going to remember this? <laughs> and if the question is, there's no way I'm going to remember this, then this is not urgent at all. Unless, of course, it's a medical thing. But, you know, really shifting the question to, am I going to remember this, helps me realize how unnecessary and unurgent and like, I should not invest my time in it. Mm, very beautiful. And it also reminds yeah. me past perspective. When you think about what will you be proud of in five years? Um, of course, that's, that's hard on a daily basis. But still, maybe in a what will you will you be proud of this week or this month? It can help us. And well. it's also a refreshing. Sorry, I think also it's a refreshing uh, take on uh, that priority quadrant, right? Urgency versus importance of a of a topic. Uh, so if you remember it, for sure it was important. <laughs> And, and it was part of your true goal. I think that also helps a lot in like, is this relevant to you personally with what you want to achieve? Great, let's continue to the next point. How do I feel? Um, so prioritizing to me is also a lot about reducing stress because if you don't prioritize, you feel stressed and you feel lost and it gets even more difficult to prioritize. Um, so reducing stress and having a clear mind helps you to think clear and decide clear. Um, something I personally try to take care of a lot um, for myself, but also my surrounding and my team. Um, it, it, it's sometimes, sometimes even a big burden. I mean, taking care of, of psychological health and well-being, it's, it's really not an easy task. Um, but I think also here, the more we can talk about it openly and exchange, um, the easier it becomes. And I wrote down a few tips that I, that I try to take care of. Um, meditation, very obvious. And in theory, I would like to do it every day. Maybe I do it every second day. But Still, um, after a few years of meditating, it helps me a lot to calm down, sharing my feelings if I feel stressed, um, if I feel overwhelmed, if something is, it doesn't feel right, um, talking about it with, with a diverse set of people and getting different perspectives on it and, and not feeling alone with it, asking for help, um, something that um, I'm, by now I'm pretty good at, <laughs> um, also because I try to be lazy. So asking for help helps um, helps a lot to, to stay lazy. Um, keep laughing. That's I think 
it's also um, a matter of luck how how you good you are at staying positive, but uh, there are also a lot of tricks helping you reflecting a lot about what, what are you um, proud of, what are you happy for, um, having a routine in your day that that um, helps you realize that actually all of this is not that relevant. I mean, if things go really wrong, it's still the world will continue turning. Um, and usually taking things too serious doesn't make them better. It doesn't make it easier to solve. Somehow I have to keep in my mind, um, luckily. Um, stop, stop your work apps. Um, as I mentioned, I do that with my screen time. Um, I feel like, as I, said, as I said before, liberated. I feel really so much better um, since, since I started doing that, not looking at my emails after 6 p.m. and before 8 a.m., not looking at Twitter, at social media, everything that I feel like, to be honest, this isn't good for me. I know I have to do it sometimes, but not during my free time where, where it should be about me um, and my well-being. And distracting um, yourself, it's to me a super important point. Sometimes when you're completely overwhelmed, for me, that was a big moment at the Versus Virus Hackathon where we were working until 2 a.m. And it was just like, it felt like this is impossible to handle. It's just everything is too much. Sometimes it's just the best idea to go outside for a walk or play a game or do whatever, just waste basically your time. And by doing that, your, your head starts to think clearly again and you realize out of all of these tasks that you feel like are overwhelming you, some of them you actually don't have to do, or there is a shortcut, or this actually doesn't fit our goal. Why are we even bothering about this? And when you're the deeper you are in it, the, the less you can you can have the clear mindset. Um, so distraction, um, taking the time when you feel like you really have no time left, I feel like is, is a great strategy, difficult to implement. But a great strategy. Um, again, up, up to you. Um, how do you perceive this? Is this something you talk about with your team? How, how you're doing personally? How you're handling stress? Do you have any other tips that help you to, to stay calm and think clear? Yes, Felix. Yeah, yeah one thing. I, I'm always thinking I should start meditating, but I never really started. I don't know how to do it or to do yoga or whatever. But what I do is walking. Like in the city, all the things that I, that where I have to go, I walk. I have 40 minutes to the main station and this is the best time for me to, to think for myself. I speak to myself sometimes even not very, not, not, not totally quiet, not, not loud, but it, like, like mumbling to myself. This is the best way for me to, to clear the, the topics, to clear everything and to prepare speeches just, just by saying them uh, um, whatever I, I plan to do. So, and this is, and it's also healthy for the, for the body. So yeah, I think this is that my med meditation is walking. Absolutely, there are so many ways of, of um, meditating for oneself and I'm a big fan of, of walking as well. I, I did for quite a while 10,000 steps a day, but then I'm, I'm just a bit competitive and even with myself. So at some point I was so crazy about doing my 10,000 steps a day that I realized now it's actually in my way, it's not helping me anymore. Um, so I reduced my walking amount <laughs> to stay healthy. <laughs> Um, but but uh, normally yeah. I think it's just as good as meditating. Yeah, I, I do the ten thousand steps as well, and I also have my statistics. And some and maybe I also have to stop the statistics, but at the <laughs> moment it helps me. <laughs> yes, I think. Um, we have not uh, discussed this specifically in our team, but uh, we are a team of four people and two of them I know have been, yeah, I know them since 2000, one of them and another one since 2004. So I know a little bit uh, like how we cope and how we manage uh, because now we are also very, very good friends. So uh, 
what I know that works for the three of us is uh, to give space to our passions. Uh, and uh, also what works is integrating uh, whatever form of sport that we like. One is with biking, another one is also with, uh, also with biking actually. I am more with this kind of things like walking, Zumba, uh, and I noticed that it uh, makes quite a, a big difference when that's part of uh, daily routine. And when I think that that's not important and I don't do it, uh, I kind of pay the consequence. <laughs> Absolutely, I know. I know that feeling as well. <laughs> so, I think we should be through until quarter past. So, I'll continue. Um, what's the plan? So, project planning, as I mentioned, is something I, I learned to love just because it helps me so much in <laughs> in my life and and handling um, everything. So. I try to plan all the most relevant steps, um, really the things that need to be done, not the nice to haves, um, with my team in one location um, to have an overview that everybody can access. Um, I think this is relevant because, first of all, it's transparent. Everybody knows what's going on, where we stand, what's up next. It's motivating to see things getting done by yourself or others. It's aligning your team on, on what's actually our priority, what are the must, must haves, not the nice to haves. It gives you a structure, it clarifies um, your, your workload at specific timeframes. Um, and all in all, thereby to me, it's, it's very calming. It's calming to know that I can open a sheet and everything that I need to do is in there and I can close it and I can sleep well. I don't have to think about all the things I might have forgotten. Um, this is what this sheet looks like for Project Arui, it's a dried flower bouquets online store. Um, you see to the left, I have the, the topic, website, um, send out, B2B, I have the task, I have the stages, very simple. To me, it needs to be very simple because I, if I lose too much time handling this sheet, it, it becomes annoying. Um, who's taking care of, of what, um, mostly me and my partner of, the, of this project. <laughs> um, the date, the link to where I can find more information about this and to the right, the final decision usually, um, or what we discussed. Um, that's also something if I love to have the sheet with like the most important notes to the right, because with so many projects going on, I tend to forget things. Um, and thereby I know that the most re relevant things I read to them on, re on a regular basis and, and I make sure I, I don't forget about it. So this is really something I, funny enough, <laughs> love doing and love taking care of. Um, so here again, um, how, how is your team organizing yourself? Is this something you have? It's actually something we don't have at Versus Virus. So once a week we need to think about what do we have to do? Um, I, I'm sure we could have saved a lot of time taking care of such a plan at some point in the beginning and then revising it. Any other experience it maybe other other kinds of templates I can only confirm that it is very stressful not to have such a thing because um, I don't have anything like this, uh, no matter how many projects I work on. And uh, I tend to keep everything in my head and luckily it's working, but it does give me sleepless nights. And sometimes because I have too many balls to handle, I tend to forget what was important. So it pops up again in two hours and uh, then I don't feel so good about not having done it. So I can only learn and uh, implement some of your strategies and suggestions because I do value well-being too. <laughs> yeah, I can 
I can stress that out as well. And Biljana, I also have many things in my mind and I always think it's enough. And my mind is big. I can have handle a lot. But then again, it's so many things that I need to be done, need to be also be kept in mind that sometimes I do nothing, which is very hard. In our team, we just have our own Slack channel and our Google workspace, like Google Docs, um, everything. But we don't have the list that uh, Nikki just showed to us. And um, maybe we also should have such a list. Thanks. What uh, also I find myself doing is when I have forgotten something important and I wake up at 12 o'clock at night remembering it, I sit and I do it just to avoid that I will not forget it again. And I don't think that's very nice as a practice. So I'll be very happy to create one of those Excel sheets. I, I really circumvent that with my to-do app. So I have this usually an overview of, of the most important task of a project. And I have the to-do app that I will show very shortly. Um, and there I write down everything I need to do in personal and like in all kinds of lives. Um, just to be sure that my mind can calm down in the evening um, because otherwise I, I know that feeling as well it, it just keeps on turning to make sure that nothing was forgotten um, so I love adding everything to this app and also when I think about something new at 12 um, in the night I just write it in my app and I can sleep again <laughs> So last but not least, how do I manage myself? So as I mentioned, like even if you know all these things, it's not easy to implement them. So having routines and in my case, also a lot of apps helping you um, sticking to these plans and guidelines um, can again, take a lot of weight from you, um, makes, make your life so much easier. As long as it's not a mess, I mean, I'm sure you can have too many tools and then you can waste a lot of time and things are saved in, in many places. So really taking time to decide for, for one of them, um, I think was, was really important for me. Um, and I realized that sometimes if different projects, the projects use different tools and that's already a big challenge for me because then I need to switch tools and not everything is in one place anymore. Um, that's something I'm not sure how to handle, but I, I realize it, it annoys me a lot and, and it makes me forget things or place things at the, at the wrong, um, in the wrong tool, etc. So my three favorite tools, um, total, my keeping track of my time. I do this with everything work related, but also for all my volunteering work, because I had this experience at some point that I I was working the whole week, um, way too many hours, and I look at my um, tracking app and realize 30 hours. How, how can that be? I was like stressed all the time. Um, so having my volunteering hours in there is very important to me to make sure that in the end of the week, I feel good and I know, yes, I've done a lot of work um, I, and I can be proud of myself. Um, Tracking my time also helps me to reflect because I can look at my week or my month and, and see where did my time go is. And I also on a regular basis think about how do I want to invest my time, 20% for this project, 20 for this. And then I can check with this app if, if this is really what I'm doing or if I'm doing something completely different and then I need to think about why and if I can and want to change this. Um, so, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good for reflection, it's good for, for managing yourself, um, being proud of yourself, and of course also in teams um, to know how, how much you have worked for versus virus, we're tracking all our hours as well. Um, so um, it's, it's also for, for accounting reasons, etc. important. Then screen time app, I have an iPhone, so I know how it works there, but I, I love this app. You can say what's the maximum amount of hours you want to spend on an app. You can say what app should be closed during what time. I mean, not that specifically, but you can say all apps should be closed from that time to that time, which I do with working apps, and the rest should be open all the time. 
Um, you can see your screen time at the end of the week that tells you this week you spent an average of one hour per day on your phone. Um, I, I love working with the app, reflecting on, on the time I spent on my phone, something I, I think, feel like is not good and healthy for me, um, and really to stop wasting time opening apps like Twitter or emails 20 times a day which unfortunately happens if it has a red dot or if I'm just distracted and open it um, without thinking about it. Last but not least, ClickUp is a to-do app. There are many others that are just as good. Um, personally, I just think it's important for me that I have an app that shows me my daily tasks for every day. So I open it um, Friday morning and I see for every task I assign a date. And then automatically I see what do I need to take care of today. Um, this, as I mentioned, helps me not to calm down. Um, I know, for example, with Trello that didn't work out because it doesn't have this daily view where I didn't manage to find a daily view. Um, but there are other a bit more simpler apps. ClickUp can do a lot for my case, almost too much, but it doesn't bother me that it has features that I'm not using. Um, unfortunately, I didn't add a screenshot of this, um, but you, you can check it out. Um, any tools you might have that you want to share or mention that are helping you on a day-to-day -day basis managing yourself? Or maybe experiences you had with one of these tools. Maybe you don't share my opinion. <laughs> Well, thanks. Um, uh, unfortunately, or luckily, I, I work on, on different um, devices, different computers. So screen time, I think, wouldn't work for me because I really have the, the, the computer here at home and a laptop for working on, on different um, places. So it, that doesn't work. But um, the others, I really have to check out. But I'm still doing it the old way. I have my... Um, my to-do list written by hand and then scratch it through and scratch it out. And yeah, it, it, it really, it still works best for me. And how but do you, it has, if you have to take care of something next week, how do you do that? Uh, this is um, not solved. This is <laughs> one of the many things I have in, in my mind and that makes me um, struggle. Yeah, that, that's a good, good point. <laughs> I think there are these boards when you can do it manually. I once saw this at a friend's place. So you have these different weeks and you can move your tasks, um, which I think is great if you're always at the same place. I have the problem, like sometimes I'm at an office or at home. Um, so I can't really have a whole board carrying with me <laughs> to handle this. But if you're always at the same place, I think there are, there are great analog versions of this as well. What I'm doing lately is uh, I'm putting in the agenda all the milestones and with little alarms. <laughs> this is what I'm trying at the moment. And uh, I see that actually it works uh, quite well. So the big milestones, they're all in my agenda. And anyway, I'm checking the agenda quite frequently. So this is how I uh, keep a hold on, uh, on these things. Sure, I think um, I know quite a few people that handle it like this. So they have every day their blockers for different tasks. I think thereby you can even manage yourself better. Um, to me, I, I realize it feels a bit too controlled. I like to have some flexibility in my day planning. Um, but for, for some people, that's, um, that feels like the better way to handle it. Yeah, I don't have it like uh, each day, like to do, do, you know, but um, it's like the big milestones and also because I'm someone that uh, is most of the time with the mobile. So everywhere I am, I'm with the iPhone. And sometimes even these meetings I was attending uh, through the iPhone when it was beautiful outside. So uh, this is how I made the learning because then I got caught unprepared uh, on nothing because I was outside with my iPhone and I was thinking, why not having uh, the most important things in the iPhone, you know? Uh, 
I had a look on my apps right now and uh, I don't have a single working app actually, uh, which helps me, yes. <laughs> but I have quite a lot of well-being apps. Like I have an app about juicing and I have a lot, an app about breathing and I have an, a my step count. And when I look at them on a daily basis, um, I feel very, really proud of myself. I have the feeling my biggest priority is to okay, take care of myself and all the rest will fall in place. Will fall in place, but uh, I can see, I just downloaded the, the two that I didn't have. I do have Toggle, uh, but I think I'm going to try them out in addition to my health and uh, yeah, <laughs> self-care apps. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that maybe that's maybe the next phase for me, just deleting all these apps that I'm now blocking all the time, which is <laughs> not really bringing me anywhere. And um, I also try by now to have like regular time in the year where I have totally offline time, no internet at all, which I feel like helps a lot in prioritizing your life and tasks. Um, so that was it. We went through these five steps. Uh, it was great to hear your opinions um, as well and your tricks and trips. If you have anything else, please feel free to share them. Um, I think it's always great to reflect upon these kind of topics. And a part of that, um, thank you all for your great work of Forces Varies really appreciate all the time um, and, and all the impact you, you enable. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nikki. This has been truly amazing. This just comes to showcase that if we know our why and what we want to achieve, then things could be much simpler than we tend to imagine. It was really insightful. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope we all learned quite a lot. Uh, so next time we will be having Victor Voss, who is the communication specialist of Impact Hub Zurich. He will come and help us learn how to create and communicate your content. So next Friday, the Versus Virus Lunch and Learn session will be on how to create and communicate your content with Victor Voss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Adela. Thank you, everybody who has been watching and everybody who will be watching it. Thank you, Daniel, for once again helping us make this possible. And we'll see you next Friday. Bye. I realized in the end, like, oh, time is over. <laughs> oh, no, but we know we started late. You had enough time. <laughs> Making sure everybody can eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs>